that's an easy one because I have this flyer still. Arm Camp, The Knot, and Suicidal Tendencies. Five bucks at the uh, Washington VFW Hall, not, uh, December 1985. Minus. Has to be Minus. Minus would come to the show with a pair of uh, spray-painted fluorescent sneakers hanging over his shoulder. He'd get there, take off his shoes, take off his shirt, take off his pants, and he'd have it on these giant boxers and put on these giant or these fluorescent sneakers that he spray painted and he would just run around the pit. He'd run at the side of the crowd and he wouldn't hit them and everybody be like this. He'd run at the other side and everybody be like this and all of a sudden he would just run at this one side and blam, take out like 20 people. Absolutely minus. CBGB's New York City, QE2, Albany, upstate. <clears throat> Upstate bands, we never really got, let's just say, it was hard to get booked in New York City. He had all those awesome bands anyway. So we just started having our own thing up here. And 1990, I remember playing n n Nothing and Nobody. And then we started doing shows at the QE2. And 1992, you couldn't get any more people in. And there'd be 250, 300 kids inside in the bar and 150 people outside. And CBGB's had canceled matinees because shows were getting really violent down there. And then the bands down there were begging to play up here. So we kind of flipped the script on that. So QE2 was our CBGB's and then some because every band wanted to play here and every band did. It was awesome. There's really, I mean, at hundreds of shows, there's three that really come to my mind and stay there. The um, Youth of Today, when uh, Break Down the Walls came out, uh, Club 288, 1986, uh, Ray Capo was out front selling records. I mean, I bought two of them. I mean, out, you know, the place, it was like a goth club and it was filled with mirrors. This place was packed to the hill, and you just had like a, like the back of the drummer. When you're standing on the street, you see the back of, of the drummer, and it's all, it's just a giant window. I just really thought somebody was gonna die. There was like waves of kids like coming and falling onto the stage, but, and just flying through the air. Nobody got hurt, but it was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. Um, but I gotta say, the last thrash bash at Lamore in Brooklyn when John came back and reunited with Harley for the first time. It did look like a pit when the, I mean, Leeway played, Biohazard played, White Zombie played. Uh, you know, it was supposed to be that last thing at Lemoore. And uh, I just, when the Chromags came on, dude, I mean, people started circ like just the crowd was amped during the clockwork intro. And when the Chromags hit the stage, dude, it was a giant fucking brawl. Nothing but skinheads. I mean, they, it didn't, they, it, no, nobody's dancing. It's just everybody turning and hitting each other. It was a giant mass of destruction. It was awesome. Last thrash bash. There's not one, there's three. And for this reason, for this reason. There's Jimmy Gestapo with his wit. There's Paul Bear with his insults. And there's Vinny Stigma with his knowledge. Vinny Stigma is the Yogi Berra of New York hardcore. Mackie, Earl Hudson, I gotta say Monster. I mean, you know. Uh, but then I got to say Goat, uh, Danny Schuler, and uh, I mean Armand. So that, you know, yeah. I like Turnstile. Those guys are great. 
not just for the energy, but just it, it, that's they really represent back in the day from what, what I remember as a kid, what, what hardcore meant. Because the kids are just up there dancing, going crazy. The bass player, geez, I forget his name now. And he, what a great kid. I love that kid. He's going so sick. He's not even playing the bass. Who cares? He's having fun, going crazy. That's the spirit, man. That's the heart. It's awesome. Turnstile. Keep, keep listening to music. Just keep playing music. Don't watch, you know, all those all that crap on TV, the voice and all that crap. Don't, don't. Do your own thing, you know. Play. No matter how much you suck, that's how you make your bones, man. Just do it. <laughs> Uniform choice, screaming for change. Youth of today, youth crew, hard. If the world was flat, I'd grind the youth to the positive, you know, whatever the lyrics are. The walls will fall. <laughs> oh, and uh, straight ahead, break away. Being a legendary, avid record collector and memorabilia collector, and coming from a, a long line of, of memorabilia collectors, right? Rabbit. <laughs> What, um, give me, uh, give me like uh, two or three like holy grails that you still, give me one or two, give me two or three. Holy that I don't have that I want? Yeah. Oh, I know right now on the top of my head. I don't have mental abuse, streets of filth. I need it. I want it. So it's, it's up on Discogs for a grand. I'm not going for a grand. I made an offer. I'm not going to say what. This is on film. <laughs> Streets of filth, mental abuse. Uh, uh, I mean, I have most of the Misfits early stuff. There's like a white three hits from hell I don't have that I want. Um, and I don't know, I pretty much have everything else. <laughs>